Hey guys, it's Pope and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This week we are going to be talking all about the back squat. For my own training right now, I've decided to switch from my weightlifting program that I offer with Dynamic Pursuit over to the strength program. And this program focuses more on the powerlifting movements of the big three. So squat, bench, deadlift. My goals right now really focus around gaining as much muscle mass as I possibly can over this winter so that I can try to get my pro card in fitness in the spring at the Arnold. So I decided since weightlifting isn't a high priority right now, I could switch up my training and focus on powerlifting. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun, so I decided why not do a series on the powerlifting movements because I don't talk about those too often. Like I said, this is going to be a series, so look forward to a video like this on the bench press and the deadlift coming up soon as well. If you're subscribed, you will get notifications when those videos come out in just a couple of weeks. Starting with the back squat because they're found on both training styles of Olympic weightlifting and powerlifting. So this video can help all kinds of people and hopefully you're going to find some of these tips and cues helpful to improve your back squat. I personally trained the high bar back squat. I personally think that is the superior style of squatting, especially if you are a weightlifter, because it really carries over into the movements like front squat, which carries over into the clean. So if you're a long weightlifter, I highly recommend you stick to the high bar path. And these cues are gonna be really helpful if you do squat high bar upright style, which is going to focus on not only your posterior chain to move the weight, but also the front side using those front quad leg muscles as well. I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, which is Built Bar. Built Bar is a brand of protein bars that taste amazing and have awesome macros, so I always incorporate them into my diet. They also have some new limited release flavors. This is one of the recent ones, Cookie Dough, that I really liked, but they're constantly changing and rolling out new stuff now. So be sure to check out their website for some new flavors that have been coming out. You can save some money on these protein bars using my discount code KPOPE10 or check out the link in my description and you can try them out because they're super tasty. Let's dive right into the technique of the back squat. Let's start with breathing and bracing. It's kind of interesting because before I had my baby, I was taught to create a lot of intra-abdominal pressure before starting the back squat. And the way to do that is to make your belly really big and push your abs against the belt if you're wearing a weightlifting belt. And that's gonna create that pressure and tension kind of outwards against the belt. And that creates um, like a safety net for the rest of your body to create that tight core. But since I had my baby and I've gone through an entire core certification process and learned so much about how the core actually works and functions, I now know the proper way to engage and brace before the back squat would include a pelvic lift and also pulling up from your transverse abdominis or these stabilizer muscles in the core. And that's gonna really protect you from injury and keep the intra-abdominal pressure regulated, especially if you have a diastasis recti gap. You don't want the pressure pushing forward. You don't wanna be using that technique, pushing your belly out against the belt. You wanna be breathing in and up to engage your core. Nothing pushing down, nothing pushing forward. So that's really important for my postpartum moms not to be using that method of pushing out against a belt before you do a back squat. As far as breathing goes, most people can hold their breath throughout the entire squat. But again, if you are postpartum, I want you to focus on a different technique and we are going to breathe out on the exertion. So you can get your belly tight and hold your breath if you want to for the descent. But as soon as you start coming up, as soon as you start that grind, exhale with that movement. That's gonna keep that pressure regulated. Next, let's talk about the back. I don't want the bar to just be resting on your back while you do the squat. I want your back to be actively engaged throughout the entire lift. What I mean by this is I want you to pinch your shoulder blades together and feel those upper back muscles activate. You're gonna be pushing your back muscles into the barbell. And I also want you to focus on a firm grip on the bar the entire lift. You'll see a lot of lifters that on the way up, they open up their hands and that's gonna reduce that tension in the back and that's gonna lead to some rounding possibly. So we want to focus on a tight grip on the bar and pulling those shoulder blades back 
tight, tight back that's gonna fight that urge to round and help you keep your chest up during the stand up. Next, let's talk about the descent. I want you to be doing what is called triple flexion. All three joints at your hip, knee, and ankle are going to be moving in unison. That is the goal. We don't wanna be sitting back into the squat and keeping those shins vertical. I wanna see all three, hips, knees, and ankles, bend at the same time so that we can keep those quads in play throughout the lift. This is not just a glute exercise, not just hamstrings. We want to keep those quads in play during the back squat. And the way to do that is to push your knees forward a little bit on the way down, which I know a lot of trainers will say that's a no-no, but it is important to have that ankle joint and knee joint hinging when the hips hinge as well. If you're doing the low bar back squat, this part is going to look a bit different. But if you're doing a high bar back squat, like the style that I use and the style that most weightlifters use, then you do want to make sure you're having that triple flexion. Now let's talk about the bottom of the squat. No bouncing. The term bounce is thrown around a lot when it comes to the squat, but what's actually happening in the bottom of a squat when you turn around and go to stand back up is a stretch reflex of your muscles once you hit that end range of your mobility. But you don't want to force it. Creating a forced bounce in the bottom of the squat will lead to you getting loose in that whole position of the squat. And if you're loose, under a heavy load, that's gonna leave you vulnerable to an injury. We don't want that. Stay nice and rigid at the bottom of that squat, and eventually a little bit of a rebound will start naturally happening. Just don't force it, especially if you're a newer lifter. Don't think about trying to make that bounce happen. Just think about staying as tight as possible, and then eventually it'll start clicking where you feel that you're getting that little bit of stretch reflex in the bottom position of your squat. Now let's talk about standing back up. We don't wanna rock back in the heels or push the hips back out of the hole when you start to stand up. I wanna see you pushing down with your toes so you can keep your quads in play throughout the entire lift. Remember, we want the front of the legs, the quads, working just as much as the posterior chain, your glutes and your hamstring. You wanna use all of your muscles in your legs on the squat, not just the backside. And keeping that toe pressure, thinking of that cue of pushing your big toe down, will really help activate those quads on the way up. If you notice yourself shooting your hips back, trying to stand up out of the hole, I want you to really focus on this cue. Now let's talk about the upper body. I want you really focusing on keeping your chest up. When you get to that sticking point, you're gonna have to fight the urge to round your back and drop your chest. Having a solid focal point throughout the entire lift will help you keep that chest up, as well as what we talked about earlier about pushing your back muscles into the barbell actively. Don't let that bar just crush you. You got those back muscles and that grip to keep the body nice and rigid, keep that core tight, and fight that urge to round the back. If this is happening to you often and you see your back rounding or you're getting a sore back after your squat, I want you to drop down your working weights and set them at a number that you can do with correct form without rounding that back. Eventually you'll get stronger, your core will get stronger, your upper back will get stronger, and you'll be able to work up to those heavier weights that you can hit with the rounded back. Safety is always key and number one. You always wanna live to lift another day. Now let's talk about finishing the squat. After you get past that sticking point, we've got a nice chest up, nice grind going on, then you gotta pull your hips through. This is when the glutes really come into play and need to fire. Once you get past your sticking point, think about pulling your hips back to the neutral position you were standing in before you started the squat, similar to how you would perform a glute bridge laying on your back. So the hips come forward and those glutes finish the drill. I hope you guys liked this video and found some of these tips helpful breaking down the technique. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Be sure to check out my training program on dynamicpursuit.net. I offer a weightlifting and powerlifting program for only $12 a month. And now you can train with me on the powerlifting strength path for the next couple of months because it's going to be super fun, I think. I'm excited to train a little bit different and connect with my powerlifting lifters that have been on the program this year. If some of these form tips and cues helped improve your squat, please tag me in your videos on Instagram. I would love to see your progress. That helps motivate me to keep making videos like this to help you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.